Eddie Hearn tried to make Jose Burton versus Anthony Yard, but Yard's team turned it down. Then he tried to make Callum Johnson versus Anthony Yard, and again, Yard's team turned it down. Now, he's going to try and make Joshua Buatzi versus Anthony Yard. Will it be third time lucky? I doubt it. I hope I'm wrong, but I'm expecting Anthony Yard's team to turn down the big offer which Eddie Hearn claims he's going to make after the summer, after these two fighters have had their next fights. Now, the reason why I talk so much about Anthony Yard and I'm so interested in his career, because let's be clear here, Anthony Yard is not a world champion. He's not fighting world-level fighters. So why would I take so much interest in his career? Why would I take so much interest in who he's fighting? Why? Because I think Anthony Yard is very, very gifted and very talented. I see an enormous amount of potential in Anthony Yard. That is why I'm so interested in his career. That is why I'm so interested in who he's fighting. Because I think he's got incredible potential. But when I look at the fact that his team, his manager and trainer Tunde Ajaye is turning down all these domestic level fights, I can only come to one conclusion. There is only one conclusion to come to. The reason why Tunde Ajaye is turning, around all these, turning down all these domestic level fights for Anthony Yard is because he's not confident that Anthony Yard can win those domestic level fights. That's why. And so I want to know why Tunde is not confident that Yard can win those fights. Because if he was confident, he'd be making the fights. But he's not confident that Yard can win those fights. So he's not making the fights. Why is he not confident? What is he hiding? What weakness does Anthony Yard have? Which is being, you know, concealed by Tunde Ajaye. That's what I want to know. I'm intrigued. Because as somebody who is a fan of Anthony Yard's ability and I can see what his strengths are I also want to know what his weaknesses are too yeah just as a boxing fan I want to know what his weaknesses are too because I, I like what I see from him in terms of punching power speed his technique his punch selection his punch economy I like all that but I also want to know what Tunde Ajayi is hiding and why he's not confident that Anthony Yard right now can beat a Boatsy, Burton, or a Johnson. And there are some people out here, and this is what Tunde Ajayi will have people believe, that it's unreasonable. You know, people out there who say it's unreasonable to have Yard fight the guys I've just mentioned. Why is it unreasonable? They're domestic level fighters at the moment. Yeah, they have maybe the ability or the talent, one or two of them, to go on to world level honours potentially but at world level in the light heavyweight division it's full of sharks it's a minefield so who knows if any you know any of these three guys I've mentioned has the ability to succeed at world level in the current climate okay but right now Joshua Buatzi is 6-0 and oh. then you've got Callum Johnson and Jose Burton they, hadn't, they ain't had an enormous amount of fights all three of them had more amateur experience than at the yard yes but just because you've had more amateur experience than somebody it doesn't mean you can't you know fight someone with less amateur experience it don't mean you can't fight someone with more amateur experience i mean i've mentioned this before you look at one of Anthony Yard's friends, O'Hara Davis. O'Hara Davis, he didn't have many amateur fights. Yard had apparently 12. O'Hara Davis didn't have many, much more amateur fights than Yard did. And just like Yard, O'Hara Davis didn't fight at a high level in the amateurs. But yet Yard, uh, sorry, uh, Davis is at least willing to fight his domestic rivals. Davis has fought two of his domestic rivals, unbeaten domestic rivals already in Josh Taylor and the other guy he fought, who I can't remember his name, the guy he fought in Liverpool, who he knocked out in spectacular fashion. And now, O'Hara Davis is going to fight a third unbeaten domestic rival in Josh Lever. So O'Hara Davis, who didn't have, you know, who had a pretty similar amateur career to Yard, he's fighting his domestic rivals, but yet Yard can't. And yes, 
he took a loss against one of his domestic rivals in Josh Taylor. But he's come bouncing back from the loss. He hasn't derailed his career. He's still going strong and he's probably learned a lot from that loss. It seems that Tunde Ajayi is trying to get Anthony Yard to a world title eventually without ever taking a fight that he isn't 99.9% .9 sure that Yard is going to win. Not even taking the slightest risk with his fighter at all. That, that's the way it seems Tunde Ajayi wants to manage Anthony Yard's career. And so you have to ask the you know, question why. If he's managing Yard's career that carefully, then he's, you know, Yard has some serious flaw there that Tunde Ajayi is worried about and is trying to conceal. And or Tunde Ajayi is more concerned about his own meal ticket. You know, or he's very concerned about his meal ticket being Anthony Yard because Anthony Yard potentially could be a serious earner in British boxing if he's managed the right way. And maybe that's what Tunde Ajayi is really looking at. Maybe he's looking at trying to build Anthony Yard into a serious earner, you know? And these days in boxing, building somebody into a serious earner, one of the ways that it's done is preserving an unbeaten record. Because Tunde Ajayi hasn't taken a fighter to a world title. He hasn't made any big money as a trainer so far, Tunde Ajayi. Maybe he sees Anthony Yard as the, the guy who he's going to make his millions with. And so he's wrapping him in cotton wool, picking his fights extremely carefully, not putting him in in any fight that is even minutely risky. Because he knows if Yard gets paid, if Yard gets built up into this star of British boxing, he's going to benefit from that. And I'm not saying it's all about money for Tunde Ajayi. I'm not saying it's all about money. So don't take it as a disrespect. But Tunde Ajayi ain't training Anthony Yard for free. Let's be clear about that. He ain't training him for free, and nor should he. All right? If you think that he's not thinking about his own finances as well as the fact, you know, as well as what's best for Anthony Yard, then you must be very naive. He has to be thinking about his own finances. Surely most trainers, or maybe every trainer who gets into boxing, they're hoping to find that one superstar who, yes, they can turn into a world champion so they can put that on their CV but also so they can get paid, right? Trainers ain't in this to do it for free, most of them, unless you're an amateur coach. And even a lot of them don't do it for free. I mean, a lot of them do, probably most of them do, but a lot of them don't. They get something out of it. They're, you know, compensated in some way, but professional trainers, the ambition of most of them is yes, to get a world champion, but also to make some money for themselves. And it's not unreasonable. So, Given the fact that Tunde Ajayi has never made any serious money as a trainer, maybe he just sees Anthony Yard as, as an opportunity, which is the best opportunity he's going to get to make serious money with a fighter because he's got a bond with him and he, he doesn't believe Yard's going to leave him or anything like that. So he's being unbelievably careful in terms of how he matches Anthony Yard because he wants to make sure that Yard becomes a big earning fighter because that means he's going to earn. Yeah? You don't want to take any risks along the way of having Anthony Yard suffer a loss because that's going to hit him in the pocket as well as Yard. You understand what I'm saying? I hate to be cynical like this, people, but I'm just trying to be real and I'm trying to understand why Tundi Ajay would be so unbelievably careful about who he picks for Anthony Yard's fights. Not even matching him against a domestic rival. I mean, you look at Jose Burton. Is Jose Burton a world-level fighter? Jose Burton lost to Frank Bullioni. You're trying to tell me he's a world-level fighter? I'm telling you, Jose Burton is not a world-level fighter. Not right now. Not unless he improves a lot in the future. Right now, Jose Burton is not a world-level fighter. You look at the guys at world level. You tell me which one of them Jose Burton's going to beat. He's a domestic slash European level fighter, Jose Burton. You, you can't put Yard in with him? For a British title or something? Seriously? You, you, you're going to be that careful with Anthony Yard? O'Hara Davis has no problem being in them, in them kind of fights. You know, and he had a similar amateur career to Yard. 
<laughs> oh man so anyway you let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section people but that's my latest on Anthony Yard uh, I can't see him fighting Joshua Boatsy Boatsy according to Hearn has asked for the fight and Hearn is going to make a big offer to Team Yard after the summer when both guys have got their next fights out of the way we'll see maybe Joshua Boatsy might look bad in his next fight and that might give Team Yard some confidence you know but all Team Yard have been talking about when they've been asked about the Joshua Boatsy fight is oh it's a big fight down the line you know it makes some money down the line and they're not talking about it happening anytime soon. And again, I'm just wondering why. Why are they not confident they can win the fight right now? Don't believe what Tunde... If Tunde Ajayi says he's confident that uh, Yard can win the fight right now, then he'll take the fight right now. Simple. If he's that confident, he'll take it now. If it's being offered... If they're, if he, if, if they're being offered big money to fight Boatsy right now and they're confident that, they can, that they'll win the fight, they'll take it now. But if they're not confident, they'll turn it down, just like they turned down the Burton fight, just like they turned down the Johnson fight. Yeah? So, we'll see what happens, man. Let me know how you feel. It's happening, I'm out.